Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about on the topic of tests. I'll talk to you about speeding up your test suite. Uh, so I'll show you an example on our current uh, code base, Honest Bee. I work at Honest Bee, and just a brief introduction. We are an online grocery delivery services company, so we have a flexible workforce of drivers and shoppers who we call as bees, and they are available. So as and when orders come in, we dispatch it to our flexible workforce of bees, and they execute the orders. So uh, very quickly, I'll talk you through the use case that I'll show you uh, for the purposes of tests. First things first. If there were no tests, there would be no slow tests. And in that case, we wouldn't really have to spend so much time uh, in today's talk or you know, ever writing tests, right? But then, tests are important. Um, how many of us have had moments where we have changed a line of code and then sighed and said, thank God there were tests for this particular piece of code? I certainly have had many of those moments. And tests are not only important, they also need to be really fast. True fact. There was a point in time where our test cases took 35 minutes to run. Doesn't seem like a big number, but imagine what the consequence is. Every time I make one line of code change, I need to wait for 35 minutes to make sure my tests pass. If something goes wrong, if there is an unstable test, I wait for another 35 minutes times the number of developers in the company. So that's really a lot of time spent waiting for test cases to run. So, we brought it down to 10 minutes, and we actually used really simple steps to bring it down to that, that particular time frame. So let's see what those are. Before I get started, uh, the test framework is our spec, uh, and I'm using Factory Girl. For those of you who haven't used Factory Girl, it's just used to create model objects in your test fixtures. So uh, a very quick introduction of our database so you understand uh, how the tests look later. We have orders that come in. The orders come in, uh, and they belong to many, many different stores. So one order can have sub-orders, which we call as order fulfillments. Each of them have stores that are basically outlets of a particular uh, brand, and then you have the brand. And uh, you, know, you can imagine that this goes on. So there are products and so on. So that's how the database looks like. All right, so uh, before I get started, I'm going to quickly load my, uh, oh, sorry, before that, let me just tell you one thing. Uh, in order to know whether your tests are slow or fast, the first thing is to measure them. And the process of measurement has to be painless and efficient. And this is where I really recommend you to try Zeus um, or Spring. So what happens in Rails is that every single time you run your tests, you have to wait for your Rails environment to load every single time. And so you don't only wait for your tests to load, but you also wait for your Rails environment, which is kind of unnecessary. Whereas what Zeus does is it allows you to load your environment uh, once and for all, and then you can keep running your test cases. You can even run your migrations, but for the purposes of this topic, we'll talk about tests. OK, before I talk about the actual tips, let me just uh, quickly show you what the uh, scenario is. And meanwhile, I'll just start running the test, because they will be slow. <laughs> OK, so this is what my, uh, oh, OK. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I thought I could show you my class. Um, can I do that, actually? Oops. Sorry, technical issues. OK. Yeah, all right. So because this, is, this takes so much time, I'm just going to do it once. Uh, OK. so. Basically, this is my service, and what, what the service does is it sends out notification to our shoppers every single time they finish an order. And when they get the notification, uh, they, there's a bunch of uh, numbers in the notification that tell them how many, order, uh, how many items have they shopped for, which kind of indicates what's their salary going to be. So you see, I just ran my test cases, and there are seven test cases, and they took about um, over here, you will see 22 seconds. It's a little bit slower, but uh, generally, if you run, a, run it a couple of times, it takes about uh, 15 seconds, not more than that. So I'll just go back to my presentation, and from here on, I'll just uh, show everything via the presentation itself. All right. So. 
Uh, one thing that we did in our test cases was this statement right here, which is forceful database clean. Now, this seems a very natural thing to do because you want to make sure that every time you run your tests, you're running them on a, very, on a clean database. But this is not only very expensive, but it's also unnecessary because our spec runs your test cases in a transaction, which is rolled back at the end of the test. So you actually don't really need to do this. And removing it, I intended to show it to you through, by running my test cases, but uh, trust me on this, it brings it down to seven seconds. Uh, which is 47% savings on what it was uh, previously, about 15, 15 seconds. Step number three, to declare and reuse your associations. Now, one common issue that people have with Factory Girl is that you, you saw the model that I showed you just now, which had order and order fulfillment. Now, if I create an order fulfillment, uh, which is basically the small suborder, but I don't specify the order, Factory Girl will just end up spinning new orders for each fulfillment that I create, and new stores for each fulfillment, and so on. So you can imagine that every association that I don't specify gets spun out and gets created in the database, and that's the most expensive part of your tests as well. So what I typically do to deal with this is uh, I would de declare a common you know, hook uh, in our spec. It's basically something that runs before all your examples. And in that, I will declare anything that is you know, going to be initialized more often than once. And then in my test cases, you see, uh, uh, I'll basically use it each time. It's, the thing is misplaced, but basically I would use it for order. Uh, I would reuse an order inside the order fulfillment every single time. So when I do that in my test cases, um, it comes down to five seconds, which is down from uh, you know, two more seconds from seven seconds. Oops. Step number four, use bill stub until you really cannot use it. Now, what does that, uh, what does that mean? Factory Girl has three different strategies. One is create, two is build, and three is build stuff. Create actually is the slowest because it, actually, it creates the object inside the database. Build does not create it, but also does not give an ID. So even though your object is not created, all the associations that are linked to it will be created in the database. Build stubbed is like a sweet spot in between, which gives a mock ID to your object. So your associations can load. And if your test is not really doing any saves to the database, you are actually good to use this option. So what I did here, for example, for two of, my, uh, two of my test cases, I replaced, instead of actually creating an order fulfillment, I just used a build stub. And when I do that, uh, it does bring the time a little bit down. But this example is a little contrived, because I'm only using it on two out of my seven specs. So it's only 4.8 seconds. But if you choose to use it more widely, your cost savings will be higher. And one tip here would be that sometimes I would just replace all the creates with build stub in a particular test suite and then see what fails. And then go, you know, from there I figure out whether I can use a create or a build stub. Step number five is to use mocks and stubs to imitate slow operations. And uh, if you notice the test cases previously, there was a post request that was being sent to the parse application that we used to send notifications to our bees. Now, this is really not necessary again, because one, it's slow, and two, if parse is down, our test cases fail again. So it's better in such situations to not do integration tests and, and instead use mocks. So you basically just imitate uh, what the method should return, and you return that instead. And when I do that, so you see over here, I do that. And then when I do that, it brings it down to, from, uh, to, to three seconds. So from 15 seconds, it's come down to three seconds, which is 80% savings on seven examples just in the last seven minutes. And so imagine when you try it on all your different test cases across your code base. Imagine the savings then. So try it out. And also don't forget to check out our jobs portal. Thank you. <laughs>